Now, no matter what fish species that you fish for, side imaging to me is still the best piece of technology that we have to go out there and locate those fish. For me, I primarily fish for bass, but if you fish for crappie, bass, catfish, side imaging can really help you to understand what is down there on the bottom as well as actually see the fish. And in today's video, I wanna do a complete masterclass, a complete rundown of side imaging. I'm also gonna incorporate some down imaging because I think they go hand in hand. So in this video, I wanna talk about exactly how side imaging works. And then I'm gonna tell you actually the biggest mistake that guys make with their side imaging unit. Then we're gonna go through the settings of this unit. And then we're gonna go through a ton of images. I'm gonna show you exactly what bass look like, what bait fish look like, grass, stumps, everything, exactly how to read your unit. So let's dive on in. All right, so those of you who know how side imaging works and how to read the bottom, you can skip on to the next segment, which is the biggest mistake people make with side imaging. But if you want a refresher or you just wanna know how this works, I'm gonna show you right now. Now this image, I'm actually going to recreate with a poster board and some fish aquarium grass and a small toy boulder that we have right here. Now basically I have recreated the image right here. Here is the bass boat. The bass boat's going to travel like this in the water and your side imaging is going to pick up everything that is on the bottom. I know it's pretty dark right now, but I'm gonna show you exactly what side imaging looks like in just a minute when I turn this light on like this. So this is basically a perfect representation of what your side imaging does. It sends you a picture of what the bottom looks like. Now, the big thing with side imaging is understanding shadows. I think shadows are really, really important. For example, you have our boulder right here in the real image. There's a shadow that comes off of it. Now looking at this sheet of paper, the poster board, again, you have a small shadow right here. Now, something that's really important to know is that if this boulder gets further away from the boat, because again, the boat is right here. Okay, if it gets further away from the boat, that, sh that shadow actually gets a lot bigger. But what's important to know is that the boulder is not necessarily bigger. So it's really important to understand how shadows kind of play when it comes to side imaging. Now, that boulder is lined up with the 25 foot mark on our graph, but I'm actually gonna tell you in a minute that this boulder is not 25 feet away from your boat. Same thing with the grass that we have over here. The grass on the left-hand side, it looks like the tip of that grass is right about 50 feet away from the boat. And this is actually the big mistake that a lot of anglers make. That, that tip of that grass, even though it says 50 foot on your unit, is actually not 50 feet away. Now, the grass over here, as you can see, I tried to make as, as good of a point as I could in the grass. The grass that you're seeing on the unit itself is called Kara. It's actually an algae. So it just kind of mats over on the bottom. The fish get around it, but they don't really get in it. And this aquarium grass that I found kind of best represents the grass. You can see there's some shadows on the outside here. Um, that's just like the shadows you see around the grass. Now, if you're looking at the top right hand side of the screen, you can see there's kind of a little bit of a lip. This piece of paper right here is probably best representing that little lip that we see here. As you can see, there's a shadow right here, the same type of shadow that you see on the screen. Now I'm gonna remove this lip that is on the bottom real quick because it's gonna help me to show you kind of the biggest mistake that a lot of anglers make with their side imaging. And that is actually the black space that is in the middle. If you look at some of the hummingbird animations, that black space is actually the depth that is between the bottom of the boat and the bottom of the lake. So actually what is directly underneath the boat is the very edge of this black space right here. That is what is directly beneath the boat. So as you can see from this image, our boulder is actually sitting in about 15 or 16 feet of water. And so you actually need to subtract that from the 25 foot mark that it looks like it's at. So to best show you this with this sheet of paper, I'm actually gonna fold it up. So as you can see, when I fold up the paper, the actual scale is different than the scale that you are seeing on your graph. So as you can see, that boulder 
that we thought was somewhere around 25 foot away is actually probably closer to about nine feet from the boat, judging by what I have here. And the same thing goes for that grass clump. That grass clump was kind of lined up with that 50 uh, foot mark on the graph, but the actual scale shows it somewhere probably around 30 to 33 feet away from the boat. Now this is really important so that you understand when you are making casts of these objects where they are. It's actually the exact same thing that is true when it comes to 360. With 360, you always have to subtract that black space, that space between the transducer and the bottom to know exactly where your object is. On 360, if you see that a boulder is 50 feet away or 60 feet away, but you're you're sitting in 20 foot of water, that means that that boulder is actually somewhere around 40 feet away from your boat. Now, a really important aspect of side imaging is actually the speed at which you do your side imaging. Now, for me to really get the best quality picture, I'm gonna be somewhere between three in four miles an hour. Now, sometimes I will go a lot faster than that if I am simply just trying to find objects down there on the water. For example, sometimes I fish really large flats. And on these large flats, I like to find maybe a single grass clump or maybe it's a rock pile or a brush pile. When I'm doing that, I will actually go fairly fast, you know, five, six, six and a half miles an hour, kind of fast. It's going to distort the image a little bit, but I know that if a, if a brush pile or a grass clump is 50 feet to the side of me, it's still gonna faintly show up on my unit. And then that's when I can turn around and actually go again by it at that three to four mile an hour range and really get a crisp image. All right, so when I am out there side imaging, this is the screen that I like. I like side imaging across the entire top. I like my down imaging on the bottom right, and I like my mapping on the bottom left. Whatever works for you though, do you. Now I will typically run my range on each side of my side imaging from 80 to 120 feet. I use 80 a lot when I'm really trying to look at an area very thoroughly. Now real quick, when it comes to the settings of the units, I've used a lot of different units before. I'm using a Hummingbird Solix right now. There are a lot of auto settings that actually work pretty well for the most part. Now, when it comes to my Solix, I'm gonna tell you real quick the two most important settings that you can use are contrast and sensitivity. I'm gonna click on my side imaging here, click on my button, and my contrast right now is set to 12 and my sensitivity is 14. That to me is actually pretty standard. Usually my contrast is somewhere between 10 and 12. My sensitivity is between 14 and 16. Depending on what bodies of water you go to, you know, if you have a lot of sediment, a really dirty body of dirty body of water, sometimes cranking your sensitivity down a little bit will help so that it's not just picking up everything in the water and it will give you a really clear image. Now, whenever I'm side imaging, 99% of the time I'm using the mega side imaging with my Solix. That's the higher kilohertz. Now, if I click down here on my down imaging, you can actually see if I, if I click at the top here, I, you can run that down imaging at 455 kilohertz, 800 kilohertz, or the mega. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. I think that using 455 kilohertz for your down imaging helps you to see fish a lot better. That is something that maybe Hummingbird wouldn't love me saying, but I'm just gonna be 100% honest with you. Running it at 455, to me, gives you a really good image. You can see fish down there really, really well. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go take a lot of images with this unit out here on this body of water, and then we're gonna go through those images, and I think by the time that we are done, you are going to understand exactly how side imaging works 100%. All right, now we are going to get into the juice of this segment, and we're actually going to go over a lot of different images to help you thoroughly understand side imaging. I think to me that this is really going to be helpful for you to just completely understand what you're seeing with side imaging and with down imaging. Now, we're first gonna start with some basic stuff, um, and then we're gonna lead all the way up. I'm gonna show you what's different cover and structure looks like, and then we're gonna actually show you some fish, and I'm actually going to 
show you two winning spots that I found. These are tournaments that I have fished locally that these two spots I found prior to the tournament. We went back there during the tournament and won off of these spots. So let's first start with this image right here. And the reason that I took this screenshot, and I'm gonna use my mouse here a lot to point, is because I wanted to show you the differences in the soft bottom areas, which are kind of these darker areas, in the hard bottom areas. This is a huge thing when it comes to side imaging. No matter what type of palette that you are using, typically when you have a darker return on the bottom like this, that is a soft bottom. For example, here we have probably a mud bottom where up here you see there's a little bit of a lip. Looking at the down imaging, there's a little bit of a lip. And anywhere you have these little, little bit of a lips, you're going to have a hard bottom area. That's a great place to find a lot of fish. There's a lot of trash fish in this area. Um, but I just wanted to show you quickly the differences between a soft bottom area and a hard bottom. We know that bass primarily and a lot of fish species actually like these harder bottoms. Okay, moving on to the next picture. Um, I wanted to show you this again to show you the difference between hard bottom and soft bottom. As you can see, dark image here, soft bottom. Over here, we actually have a riprap bridge. If you look at the map right here, this is actually a bridge causeway in the middle of the lake. This is exactly what riprap looks like. I mean, you can almost see the individual rocks here, these bigger rocks. You can also see exactly where these rocks end. Now, the reason that I wanted to take this picture is one, to show you something that's familiar. A lot of us know what riprap looks like um, because we see it on bridges. Um, and so, this is an easy representation of what it looks like underwater, but I also wanted to show you something that's very subtle here that a lot of guys might miss. And if you look right here, you actually have an underwater hard bottom point right there. See how there's this, this little area that kind of shoots out and it's just a, a little bit harder bottom. You can see the difference in color here in comparison to out here. These are areas that can be dynamite to catch fish species of all different kinds. Now, especially for bass, as you can see, there wasn't really any fish. There's a lot of bait fish in this area, but I'm not seeing the actual fish right here that I would like to see for me to even make a cast. But these are the type of areas that I'm gonna go ahead and mark, and I'm gonna check them from time to time because there's gonna be a lot of people that come over here, they fish this riprap bank over here. They're not always gonna notice this subtle point where it's just a little bit of a hard bottom point here, a little bit of a rockier bottom, and those can be really, really key, and it's something that a lot of guys don't take advantage of. So next image is this one right here. Um, I wanted to show you something that's very, very important to understand when it comes to side imaging, and that is distortion. As you can see up here, you may be looking at this image, and the side imaging is up here, obviously, but if you look over here, you can see basically that it just looks weird. And you may think that the bottom's a little bit different over there, but I want you to notice my boat track. If you look down here, you can see that I was going straight, going straight, and I'm starting to turn. Anytime you turn with side imaging, you're gonna have this distortion like we see right here. It's very, very easy to see. So I just wanted to make sure if you are new to side imaging that you knew what kind of this distortion looked like when you turned. Now here's another perfect example of an image that I really wanna show you. We have a lot going on here, but this is actually a boat ramp. This is what the bottom end of a boat ramp looks like. As you can see, there's there's a, a slow incline here as it goes up to the boat ramp. And you can see very plain as day, you can kind of see the actual ramp here. You can see the sides of the ramp as it comes straight across and then goes back up. That's the concrete part of the ramp right there. Below here, you have some just rock in this area. These are This is riprap all along this right here. This is all riprap. We also have some riprap over here, um, but this kind of, uh, which actually looks like a, a head of broccoli over here, that's more grass. Um, that's just grass in this general area. Um, something that I really wanted to point out is you can actually see right here, this little small square there, that's where they poured uh, concrete to then put a post in. This white spot right here, that's actually one of these long posts that stick out 
of, of this boat ramp. Over here, there's actually another one. I was kind of right close to it, so it's harder to see, but there's another post right here, and this is why you have this big black shadow that goes all the way across, because this is actually the shadow from the post that is sitting right here. You can see the other uh, kind of concrete block right there um, that's showing up. This one's kind of covered up by some rock and probably some algae as well. That's why it doesn't look as clean as the one that is over here. But a very, very easy image to see what the end of a boat ramp looks like. I did want to point out a couple more things. One, again, soft bottom area all over here. These little like patches right through here are just kind of stubs of grass. Um, but right in here, you can see um, a little area. These are actually Christmas trees. So the ODNR here in Ohio plants Christmas trees. And you can see one, two, three, four, five of them laying down right there. So that's very uh, noticeable, uh, a great place to find crappie. Um, and then over here, you kind of have another one of those subtle points, kind of like what we talked about there a minute ago. Here's another little subtle point with what looks to be uh, a small, that's probably actually a grass clump. You can see it's not very hard looking like some of these rocks and boulders that I'll show you in a minute. So I think that right there is a small grass clump. So perfect image of really what side imaging looks like. Now, again, I want I just want to give you some of these, um, these images that I think you'll be really familiar with. Here is that same bridge that I showed you earlier. You can see the riprap bank over here. You can see the soft bottom. Right up in here is actually where we saw that subtle point. Um, but I wanted to show you again distortion. Right in this area, you can see kind of this uh, this just where it looks like the image has been stretched and that is right here as you can see my boat track that is right where I turned so right where I turned you're going to have that distortion I just wanted to really reiterate what distortion will look like so it doesn't throw you off here's another image of that bridge um, this one here is the bridge pilings themselves so you can see I'm kind of going around this point um, here's a per all the riprap that goes around this point. It's it's very easy to see that. And then you have bridge pilings. You have a set on the left hand side of the boat, and you have a set on the right hand side of the boat. So real real easy to see here. If these if these shadows extend all the way off the frame, that means that this object is coming completely out of the water, which it being a bridge piling, that makes perfect sense. You can also see there's a lot of bait fish in this area. There, there always is a lot of bait fish around bridges. These are This is the down imaging. These are clouds of, of a thread fin shad that we got here and some, some small gizzard shads as well. We're gonna talk a lot more about fish here coming up. Um, I think that the fishing, understanding what fish look like is one of the most important parts. Uh, but I did want to point out one more thing that I see in this image. Look right up here. This looks like somebody had a bad day because that looks like a little tiny boat, if you ask me. You can kind of see where it's pointed, comes down, just a little small boat. I really, I didn't, literally didn't notice that until I was watching this right here. Um, that's something that I'll have to go examine and, and make sure that it's a boy, boat myself. So moving on to the next image. Now we're going to really start talking about different types of cover. And the first one I'm going to talk about is grass. Grass is one of my absolute favorite places to find bass. And I think that it can be extremely overwhelming for anglers at times. But these are the type of the areas that I always look for when I am fishing grass. And that is a really defined Edge. You can see here there's a pretty good edge of grass where you have, you know, a, a hard bottom all through here and then just a line of grass. These bass are going to hang right on this line. This is a great ambush point for them to shoot out, grab bait fish or anything that's going across. You can also kind of see the grass in the down imaging where it kind of just goes and then it stops. Yeah, there's a few clumps out here, but there's a pretty good hard edge. These are the types of places that I really like to find when I'm fishing grass. I'm gonna show you a few more images though here of grass. This is a great spot. This is a spot that I would stop and fish. And the reason that I would fish here is because sometimes when you are dealing with grass, it can be a little bit difficult to see the actual bass on side imaging. If the bass are up inside of this grass, they're really not going to show up too well. But the reason that I like this image so much is you have a perfect little grass. It's actually a grass point. It looks like a strip here. I mean, it's just kind of this long little point that sticks out. But you can see on both sides of this 
point, you have a very defined edge right there, a very defined edge right there. And you can see where it goes from literally grass to a hard bottom right there. That is a dynamite place for a bass to hang out. Hard, hard at grass edge uh, and a hard bottom. Those are That's the type of area that I am going to throw probably a moving bait like a lipless crankbait or a chatterbait in before I examine it. Now, you can see on this side of the image, it's pretty much all shadows. And that's because this bottom actually drops off here. As the point drops off, you're going to, if you're going to lose the bottom because of the shadow. Now I'm actually going to show you this side of the point. I actually went up here and I turned around and I re-graphed this area. And this is what it looks like on the other side. You can see we got the same grass point kind of from the opposite side though now. And as you can see here on the very end of it, you have the grass that's that kind of stops right around here. And then you kind of have a a hard bottom area right in here. This is just a little bit of a hard bottom. And then you can see real clearly how it drops down into the, the softer bottom area. This area right here, I would, I would love to fish it if I was seeing fish, but this is the type of the area where you should be able to actually see the fish themselves. Again, we will talk about fish here in a minute, as well as, like I said, I'm going to show you a couple of winning spots in tournaments that I have, that I've had. So uh, a real great um, looking point here that I would probably fish around for just 10 minutes or so to see if there's any fish relating to it. So a little bit more with grass fishing and then we're going to move on. Um, here you can actually see that the grass is very sparse. Looking at my 2D imaging down here, you can see how it's not really thick grass and it actually shows up the same in the side imaging up here. It's just not very thick. And if you notice right here, bam, that is something you need to get familiar with with side imaging. That is a bluegill bed. That is a high percentage area. If there are bluegill spawning in this area, I can almost guarantee that there's going to be bass in this grass on the outside edge waiting to ambush these bluegill. So this is a spot I would definitely mark with my waypoints. I would come back to and fish. Um, but again, it just goes to show you that when the grass is a little bit more sparse like this, you can see within the grass. And for, for instance, here, this is a bluegill bed. I can tell you right now, and, and by judging by this picture, you can even tell too that this bluegill bed was actually empty. A lot of times when bluegill beds have actual bluegill in them, you will see a white speck in the middle of their bed. This little black dots are the honeycombs of the beds. And you will see a white speck right there in the middle. You don't see it here. I actually ended up fishing this spot anyways because it had this nice drop here that I also liked when I looked at the grass. Didn't catch any fish here, didn't catch any fish here. It was a vacant bed. So moving on from grass, um, I wanna talk about stumps because stumps are, to me, stumps are one of the best places to find bass and it's one of the easiest places to see with side imaging. I love stumps because usually if you can find some stumps that are by themselves, you can find bigger than average fish around them. And that includes crappie, bluegill, and bass. So over here, these are the actual stumps. Um, there's actually a lot in this area. Like that's a stump. This is a stump. This is a stump. This is a stump. There's a lot of stumps in here. I prefer when there's just a lone stump all by itself. Um, but I will still idle over these areas. As you can see, I actually marked all these stumps down here as well. Um, I prefer when they're uh, alone, but I did want you to kind of look to see what a stump looks like. Now I'm actually gonna show you a zoomed in picture of that stump. And it's very easy to see when I, when I zoom in with my um, Mega Live, you can actually see the roots. Like this is the main part of the stump and these are the roots that are coming off of it. This is the shadow, my boat is over here. So the shadow is gonna be on the left-hand side. Very easy to see that stump. If this was by itself, I would definitely mark it. I would, I would idle over it several times to make sure that there wasn't any fish sitting on it. So moving on to the next um, area, um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about hard bottom and this is a road bed. And it's extremely easy to see here um, how this is just a perfect road bed. You can see this side of the road. You can see this side of the road. And then there's a small drop. This black shadow on the side just lets you know there is a small drop 
on the side. Now this, these, if you look at my 2D here, there is these plumes of fish, those are crappie. And you can see them on the side imaging as well right there. These are all a bunch of crappie. There was a bunch of trash fish mixed in as well. I actually threw at these fish to catch them because I wanted to eat some dinner and I caught several on a little uh, Kitech style swim bait. But that's a lot of crappie on a road bed. Let's show you guys another road bed. Sorry, I messed that up a little bit. Uh, this one's a little bit more subtle, um, but you can see this straight line, this side of the road. You can also faintly see this side where it's, it's starting to, the sediment is starting to build up, so it's not as defined of a line, but you can still see it. And then you can also see off to the side, there's a cluster of stumps and there's another cluster of stumps right there. So you can really see the stumps in those areas. Those might be areas that I idle over um, to check to see the bass. If the bass are on this roadbed here, you should be able to see them. Um, and again, we're gonna talk about fish here and show you some images of fish in just a minute. So uh, this is a this is a, an image that uh, I wanted to pull up because it can be a little bit confusing to see. Um, you can see down here that I was turning uh, my boat was turning. So there is some distortion in these areas up here, distortion, all this actually distortion. Um, but right here is a good looking uh, little hump. You can see with the down imaging how what the hump looks like. And it's just rock on top of there. Um, it's a very rocky bottom. When you see rocks, they're gonna look like this. You're gonna see a, a blob like you see right here, a blob with a dark shadow directly behind it that's really important is the is the the shadow is attached to the blob when we talk about bass that shadow is actually detached from the blob itself so this is an area that if you're if you're it's, it's definitely a good looking area but i'm not really seeing a lot of fish in this area these are all mostly small rocks that you're seeing you can see some bait fish on the down scan um, that might be a fish right there. It's kind of off to the side. Definitely some bait fish in the area. Uh, might be worth a cast or two, two just because of how much bait is in the area. So let's look at um, the next um, um, page or the next shot here. And this is actually a giant boulder. If you guys remember the big boulder that we talked about uh, in the beginning of this video, this is the exact same boulder. And, and this is me. I, I idled directly over this boulder, um, which is why it's a little bit hard to see on the side imaging here because I was right over top of it. You can see it really clearly on the down imaging though. And you can see how just how big this boulder is. I mean, we have a 15 foot line here, which it's a little bit above. And this line, well, this is 22 and a half. So that's seven and a half feet between this line and this line, which means this is 3.75 feet between this line and this line. And you could fit this boulder right there in between there. So this rock is about four feet tall. That's a big boulder. That is a type of an area that if you live up in the north and you fish for a lot of smallmouth, that is what you want to find. You can actually see here, um, there are some fish in the area. There's a couple of bass right there. Um, this looks pretty big to be a bass. I'm assuming that's a carp um, right there. Um, but again, we're going to get into fish here in just a moment. Let's keep on moving on. The next image, uh, I, I wanted to show you this image because this pretty much incorporates all the different covers and structures except for the roadbed that we talked about. So on the left-hand side of the screen here, you can see kind of a grassy point right in this area. Um, over here, you have some rock. This is again what rock looks like. We have a, we have a, a, a white spot with a shadow behind it. This is actually an older roadbed. Or, or sorry, this is actually an older house foundation that's had a little bit of sediment build up. Um, if you look kind of right here, you can kind of see where this is the, the side of the house, the corner, the corner kind of makes this shape right here. Um, again, this one has just had a lot of bit of sediment build up. Also, when they tore these houses down, they just threw everything everywhere. So this actually may be parts of the, the rock foundation, the concrete that are just out here in the middle of nowhere. Um, and then you have um, the stumps. There's stumps right here. Stump, 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 stump. There's stumps all over. So you have a little bit of everything in this area. The big thing I'm not seeing is a lot of fish. You may have some fish up in the grass 
in this area right here. I'm not really seeing a whole lot of fish in here, but this would be an area I would definitely mark because it has a lot of different pieces of cover in it. And anytime you have a lot of different pieces of cover that are meeting, that can be a high percentage area. So let's dive into fish. And the first graph I wanna show you is one that I think is really, really important because this is not where you wanna stop your boat and start fishing, okay? When you see stuff like this, this is not, these are not bass, right? They're, they're, for, for You have a lot of bait fish in this um, area. You also have a lot of saw guy. So I guess if you're a saw guy fisherman, you might want to fish around here. A lot of these these um, suspended fish are saw guy themselves. Um, but if you're a bass fisherman, I think a lot of guys get caught up stopping in these type of areas and fishing, and then they don't catch anything. And that's because they're not even fishing for bass. Um, so these are, to me, they're trash fish for you. If you like to fish for, for saw guy, um, then maybe you would actually enjoy this spot. So I shouldn't say they're trash fish, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so that's just an image I thought was really important to show. Now, moving on, let's look at another uh, picture of actual fish. Here is an old road bed uh, in the side imaging. Now, if you're wondering, before we talk about the fish, you see this line right here that goes straight across. That is because I stopped my side imaging to make a waypoint and then I restarted it. So it just kind of picked up where I left off, which is why it looks like this, um, which is a little bit odd. But anyways, here is the road bed right here. Um, but off the side of the roadbed, you can see there's a stump right in this area. But all these, all these fish right here, these are the actual fish themselves. And these are all the different shadows. And this is a group of crappie. If you are a crappie fisherman, this is what you want to find. This is where you can absolutely drop a minner down there and just go to town catching a lot of crappie. Um, you can see how tall, the, the, the further away that these fish are from their shadows. Like here are the shadows, here are the fish. They're pretty far away. The fish themselves are pretty far away from their shadows, which means they are high off the bottom. And if you look at the 2D, you can see that these fish are, some of them are five feet off of the bottom or better. So you can see that group really easily right there on the side imaging. Again, if you like to fish for crappie, that's what you wanna look for. All right, moving on. Um, this is a little juicy picture. This is not a winning spot. I'm actually about to show you a couple of winning spots here in the next few images. But this is a spot that a lot of guys may overlook um, because of what it looks like with side imaging. Now, looking at your down scan, you're seeing some bait fish here. You're seeing some what look like carp, these bigger blobs here. Um, but what really intrigues me about this picture is one, you kind of have this subtle point that sticks out right here, uh, which is this subtle point right there on the, on the map. Um, but right on the end of the subtle point is this. This is what would make me stop. These right here are what bass look like a lot of times with your side imaging. You can see here you have little white specks and you have these shadows that are behind them. This is a great little area. Now this was a group of bass that did not bite. I know that they were bass judging by not only the side scan, but I actually got up on my trolling motor, looked at them with Mega Live and they were set up just like bass. These fish did not want to bite, but that is a little, little wad of bass that could, it, it could just be a timing deal. Um, when you pull up at the right time and, and they start firing, um, you could catch a lot of fish right here. These fish, I think, were a little bit spooked because it was fairly shallow water. I mean, the boat sitting in 13, they were probably sitting in about seven foot. Um, so not very deep at all. Um, but these can be, this is what you really want to look for a lot of times when you're out there on the water. Now this um, is the same picture. I just kind of zoomed in on it for you guys to be able to see that you have a white speck, you have a shadow. White speck, shadow. White speck, shadow. That is, that is good stuff there. That is what you wanna find. That is bass, that is not rock. When there's separation between the white blob and the shadow, that is what you wanna find. Now, um, let's go on to this point here. I wanted to show you quickly down scan bass um, because this is a perfect example of what downscan bass look like. Um, whenever uh, Jacob Wheeler puts this the best, he says that bass that on downscan look like bumps on a log. They look like turtles on a log is actually what he says. And this is a perfect example. When you have fish that are lined up across the bottom, we have one, two, 
three, four, five, six fish that are lined up across the bottom, that is a little wad of bass right there. Um, I actually caught a couple of these fish themselves, um, but that is just a little wad of them right there. Um, if you look over on my side scan, you can see these bass as well. They're, they're primarily right in this general area. You can see right here, white speck, shadow, small white speck, shadow, white speck, shadow, white speck, shadow. That is just a little group of fish right there. The, the problem with these fish, I only caught a few of them. They were moving a lot. As you can see, there's a lot of all these little blobs out here that you're seeing are bait fish balls. Um, you can see just a little bit out here. These fish were just moving all over the place. I literally would cast to them and they would move by the time my bait got to them. So I did catch a few, but they were moving a lot. Um, so now I want to get on to what I think is the juiciest nuggets that you will see when it comes to side imaging. So this spot right here is a winning spot. And the reason that I want to pull this up is because I want you to guess right now. Go ahead, throw it down in the comments. Do you see the winning group of fish right here? Um, I think a lot of guys' eyes are probably going to go over here. There is a um, just a, uh, a group, this, not a group, a, this is an old house foundation that's very broken up. Um, there's not a lot of fish in this area, but big key right here, very, very subtle right there. Bam, right in this circle right here. You can see these white specks with these shadows that are like separated from them. White speck, shadow, white speck, shadow, white speck, shadow. That is a winning group of bass on the side scan. Now, again, I'm from Ohio. These specks are probably gonna look bigger for you depending on where you live in the country. These fish right here were all two to three pounds. Um, okay, so you can see what they look like. If you're fishing for three, four, five, six pounders, they're going to be bigger. They're going to look bigger and you're going to be able to see them even better. So it takes a little bit more of a trained eye to see some of these ones, uh, especially if you live in a place like Ohio. So when I saw this, I actually decided to idle around and the very next shot you'll see is what they looked like when I got them on um, down imaging. So this group of fish, you can still see a few of them. They kind of scattered when I idled over them, which is really important to understand, but you can see right here very faintly white speck shadow, white speck shadow, white speck shadow, white speck shadow. These are bass on the side scan, but the down scan is where, where it's at, okay? You can see in this area, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These may be bass that are very tight to the bottom. There's also very big rocks in the area. Um, so I'm not sure like these big blobs here are fish that are going down. A lot of times if this fish was up here and you idle over him and he shoots down because of the boat engine, that's what that mark is going to look like is them shooting down. That is what you want to find. In this tournament, this was actually the day before the tournament, I came back and Interestingly enough, this group of fish moved about 50 feet from where they were. And it makes sense though too, because they weren't really holding on anything. They weren't really holding on anything specific. I mean, you can see these stumps here in the distance, but the fish weren't relating to those stumps. They were just kind of on this know nothing hard bottom area right here. And these fish in the tournament had moved about, I think it was 43 feet away from this area. I ended up relocating them and I caught 16 pounds of bass with my partner right there. It was really, really fun, and we did it all in about eight casts, and it was over. Once we found them, it was over. So again, though, that spot derives from this spot. And again, you can see how easy it would be to miss these fish, because I'm not seeing anything on my down scan but it's very easy to miss over those fish. Once I idled back around though, I saw them and we just were able to go to town. All right, so I wanna go through just one more image with you guys. Um, this is another winning spot that I found. This is something that um, these, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly subtle area. You can see I kind of graft over a small lip here. And when I graft over the lip, I just happen to go right over a group of bass. I mean, you can see them all the way down here. One, two, three, four, that's a rock. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I mean, there's 11 in just this area. And I'm gonna let you know, I should have said this earlier. 
if you only see five fish, four fish, five bass um, on your down scan, usually you can pretty much guarantee that there's about three times as many of what you're seeing on the down scan actually down there because your, your, your down scan is not going to pick up the fish that are off to the side here. Over here, you can see a ton of fish in this general area. A lot of white specks with shadows, white specks with shadows um, that are separated. So you know that they are fish. This again was another group of fish. It was a winning spot pulled up and literally 15 pounds in I think it was six casts this time. Now I absolutely love my side imaging, but another piece of equipment that I love is my Hummingbird 360. With all this talk about live units these days, I feel like people have forgotten about 360 and I actually made a video, I'm gonna link it right here, where I go into where I actually use my 360 more than my live units. So if you guys like this one, I think you'll like this one as well. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.